again, thank you for joining us wherever you are in the world. This is Live Conversations, a program from the Table of Maritime TV Africa. And here we engage experts and stakeholders around the world in discusses on policies, developments, and events in the maritime and blue economy of Africa. My name is Aizen Nazana, your host, and with me to facilitate the French translation is our own dear Ifoma Magbogo. Bonjour, Ifoma, and thank you for being here again today. Thanks for joining us. Bonjour, Aizen, my pleasure. Bonjour, chers téléspectateurs, et soyez les bienvenus de n'importe où vous êtes dans le monde à Live Conversations, votre émission hebdomadaire de l'écurie de Maritime TV Africa, qui engage des experts et des parties prenantes à travers le monde dans des débats, les événements, les politiques, les développements au sein de l'économie bleue en Afrique. Avec notre hôte, Ezine Azona, je m'appelle Ifoma Wabog. All right, so before we get into the discuss of the day, please be informed I'll be glad to receive and broadcast your port's information on ships to birth every week at your port, wherever it's situated within Africa. Do send us an email with information to maritimetvafrica at gmail.com. Alors, avant de plonger dans le sujet du jour, sachez que ça sera un plaisir pour nous de recevoir et de diffuser de vos ports, n'importe quel où, où ils soient en Afrique, les informations sur les navires à accoster chaque semaine. Envoyez simplement un email avec les, les informations à maritimetvafrica.gmail.com. Merci. All right, we'd also be glad if you would at this point in time take a second right now to repost or share this live broadcast. Do invite someone to join this very important conversation. Also remember to follow us on all social media handles at Maritime TV Africa. We'd also love your feedback and thoughts on the discourse of the day. Drop your comments and ask your questions and we'll surely engage you. Nous serons également heureux si en ce moment vous prenez le temps de rediffuser ou de cliquer sur le bouton partage afin d'inviter quelqu'un à joindre cette conversation très importante. N'oubliez pas non plus de nous suivre sur tous les réseaux sociaux avec notre identifiant. Finalement, vos retours et questions seront les bienvenus. Veuillez les signaler dans la section discussion. Merci. All right, so 90% of the world's trade move on ships. According to the International Chamber of Shipping, 50,000 merchant ships trade internationally, and there are 1,892,720 seafarers serving on board these ships. 857 857, 540 of them are officers, and 1,035,180 1, are ratings. The Philippines, the Russian Federation, Indonesia, China, and India are the largest suppliers of ratings and offices working on mission ships. 90% du commerce mondial s'effectue par voie maritime. Selon la Chambre internationale du transport maritime, 50 000 navires marchands font du commerce international et 1 800 000 à peu près marins travaillent à bord de ces navires. Environ 857 000 d'entre eux sont des officiers, tandis que 1 million 35 000 à peu près sont des matelots. Les Philippines, la Fédération des Russies, l'Indonésie, la Chine et l'Inde sont les plus grands fournisseurs de matelots et officiers travaillant sur ces navires marchands. While the exact number of Africans who are seafarers seems to be unavailable, it's predicted that Africa could take more place and presence on the Korean map. The biggest challenge for Africa may have been revealed in the Sailor Society 2023-2024 cadets report, which shows that 62% of African cadets fear that they won't get an employment after studies. 17% of them think they won't be able to cope at sea. Just 2% of them think they may fail their exams, while 17, another 17% 17 of them think they will disappoint their families. 
the actions and inactions of African governments can inhibit this. These professionals, smart nations are building up seafarers as a global resource and um, reducing employment. Même si le nombre exact des marins africains n'est pas disponible, toujours est-il que c'est prédit que l'Afrique pourrait avoir plus de présence sur la carte d'équipage. Le plus grand défi pour l'Afrique a peut-être été révélé dans le rapport de 2023 à 2024 des officiers de la marine publié par l'organisation Sailor Society, qui démontre que 62% des cadets africains craignent de ne pas trouver d'emploi après leurs études. 17% pensent qu'ils ne vont pas réussir en mai. Seulement 2% pensent qu'ils risquent d'échouer à leur examen. Un autre 17% pense qu'ils décevront leur famille. Les actions et inactions des gouvernements africains peuvent constituer un blocage pour ces professionnels. Les Nations habiles font des gens de main un acteur de ressources mondiales, réduisant ainsi le chômage. Today on Life Conversations, therefore, we'll be discussing how government's policies inhibit seafarers. And Mr. Jeremiah Emmanuel is our guest. Emmanuel is a seafarer who's worked in Nigeria for years and now moved on to an American liner. He's joining us from that very vessel. He's one of the leaders at the Maritime Officers Forum Nigeria. Welcome to the show, Emmanuel, and thank you for making our time to be with us. Aujourd'hui, dans Live Conversations, nous discuterons de comment les politiques du gouvernement constituent un blocage pour les gens de mer. Et M. Jeremiah Emmanuel est notre invité. Emmanuel est un marin qui a travaillé au Nigeria et qui actuellement travaille à bord d'un navire américain. Il est l'un des dirigeants du de Forum des officiers maritimes du Nigeria et aujourd'hui, il nous rejoint depuis son navire aux États-Unis. Bienvenue sur le plateau, Monsieur Emmanuel, et merci d'avoir pris le temps. Uh, good morning, Madame Isine. Thank you for having me this morning. Thank you, Emmanuel. It's good to have you. How are you? And um, let's just begin by asking you to share your journey as a seafarer in one minute. You know, just tell us briefly about your journey. Parlons-nous brièvement, Emmanuel, de votre trajectoire en tant que jeune de main, brièvement. Okay, um, my journey as a seafarer, I started uh, this career with a uh, LTT in Lagos, where I later moved to West African Ventures. And uh, from West African Ventures, I moved to Pian O Maritime Logistics in Dubai. Then from uh, Pian O Maritime Logistics, I joined Royal Caribbean International Miami, where this is where I'm, uh, I'm Currently with Royal Caribbean. OK. Ma, ma traje, mon trajectoire mon, a, a commencé au Nigeria sur un LTT. De là, j'ai travaillé avec West African Ventures. Après cela, j'ai voyagé sur Dubaï pour travailler. Actuellement, je me situe aux États-Unis, à Miami précisément. All right, could you tell us about your group, the Maritime Officers Forum Nigeria? What informed the formation of this group and um, your membership strength? What it's, is it like and how long have you run? What's actually the core of your establishment? Parlons-nous de votre group, Forum des Officiers Maritimes du Nigeria. Qu'est-ce qui a motivé la formation de ce groupe? Depuis combien, combien de temps travaillez-vous et combien vous en êtes actuellement? Okay, in uh, 2018, after our studies in Ghana, uh, we realized that uh, most of the uh, Ghanaians and Cameroonians in our class were on uh, foreign liners. But we were majorly within the Nigeria territorial waters working. And uh, we asked them what, how did you get the job, what happened to, uh, why are they not taking Nigerians? They'll say, okay, because of your passport, you Nigerians don't have good image in the international community. So we sat down and decided to start the group. And there was like one of the uh, major aim of the group is to rebrand the image of uh, 
Nigeria and the international community and also share job opportunities between ourselves and what is happening uh, and what happens in the maritime sector. So that was what formed our, uh, our why we formed the group. And our strength is above 1,000 now. And uh, there have been testimonies. There have been testimonies, and uh, actually, I'm also a testimony of that group. Notre association a été créée en 2018 et les membres pionniers étaient des marins qui venaient de terminer leur formation au Ghana et se sont rendus compte que la plupart des diplômés ghanéens et camerounais se retrouvaient sur les navires internationaux alors que nous les Nigériens ne pouvions, trava ne pouvions travailler que sur les navires locaux. Lorsque nous avons posé la question, nos euh, homologues ghanéens et camerounais nous ont répondu que c'était à cause de nos passeports nigériens. Paraît-il que les gens n'ont pas confiance au Nigeria à l'échelle à internationale. De retour, nous avons décidé de créer l'association afin de donner une nouvelle image au Niger, du, du pays à l'intérieur et ailleurs aussi afin de pouvoir aider nos gens à trouver un travail. L'un d'autres euh, de nos objectifs aussi, c'est de sensibiliser les marins nigériens sur l'industrie et comment ils peuvent se faire pour trouver du travail. Nous comptons plus de 1000 membres et ça croît de jour en jour parce que nous enregistrons beaucoup de témoignages. Et mon histoire est un tel témoignage de succès, donc euh, ça évolue au jour le jour. And thank you, um, Emmanuel. Thank you. Um, it's good to know that your efforts are yielding fruits. But you'd agree with me that you've been on two sides of the divide, so in Africa and in the Western world. I would like to ask what difference or differences you have spotted uh, in terms of how we handle our seafarers, in terms of professionalism, in terms of um, market availability, in terms of pay, you know, the salaries in terms of exposure, in terms of generally how we deal with our seafarers versus what you saw or have seen and experienced there, you know, what differences have you spotted? Merci pour la réponse, Emmanuel. Uh, C'est bien de savoir que vos efforts recortent de bons fruits. Maintenant, parlons-nous du travail. Vous avez exercé au Nigeria. En ce moment, vous êtes à bord d'un navire étranger. Y a-t-il une, une différence entre ce que vous vivez actuellement en termes de professionnalisme, d'exposition, du salaire, de, de bien-être, de tout, pour vous, pour le, moyen, le marin moyen, en ce que vous avez vécu um, plus tôt au Nigeria? OK. Ah, uh, well, I will say the, I will start with the, the uh, crew welfare. Back in Nigeria, crew welfare is very, very poor. The companies don't uh, give a uh, seafarer's welfare. Uh, you see a seafarer going to join a vessel, paying for his own transportation, paying for his hotel. Uh, it's not supposed to be so. Companies are supposed to pay for your transportation and your hotel to join a vessel. Also, you see, uh, even for interviews, people want to, they want to do interview. You see somebody traveling all the way from uh, from Lagos to Portacourt for an interview, which can be done online. And also the uh, there are no insurance. I don't think there are insurance for vessel. For a year before I came, I signed my insurance. Most times before you join vessel outside, they give you your insurance paper and you sign. But I have where I work in Nigeria, I never saw my insurance paper any day. So crew welfare for Nigerian seafarers are. Uh, it's very, very poor. That is the difference. The difference is crew welfare. And salaries also are very poor. You should also know that uh, the uh, price, uh, because of this uh, uh, Naira going down, the price of course is outside. So in Ghana, it is outside Nigeria, you pay in dollars. And uh, the price of courses are going up. The salaries are still the same. So you see that it's very difficult for Nigerians working in Nigeria to renew their papers now. Very difficult because of uh, the price of courses outside. Uh, so that's one of the differences I have seen. Some of the differences. Um, 
can you uh, can you give us like what in terms of price? I know you I mentioned earlier on. Sorry for my please, permit me. You mentioned earlier on in terms of price. You know what an engineer would earn here in Nigeria and what if an engineer would earn elsewhere. You know. Could you um speak to that, or you don't want to? Okay, uh, I won't want to say for everybody. Let me start for an OW. I won't want to talk about the chief engineer. Just let me start for an OW. OW, I, I won't talk for engineer. I'll talk for an OW deck. An OW deck, full DP officer in Nigeria earns less than 2 million naira, between 1.5 million and 1.3 million. But in, uh, in Saudi, because most of the uh, OW guys are in Saudi now. They earn above more than times two of what what is currently in and still uh, getting in Nigeria. So it's not even about the, uh, the the money, but the welfare also. Sometimes it's not about the money, the welfare. How you are treated? You send mail to the office. They don't respond. They talk to seafarers anyhow. But outside, it's not like that. Like that, you you are respected as a chief error. Like what I tell my friends also, when you are traveling, you like they said uh, our our passports are not good when they owe the passport. Like I was traveling one time in Miami, and uh, everybody was going through. When the immigration officer saw my passport, he was like, "Can I get your ID card or any other thing?" So most times it has happened like that. So what we advise our people also is to old the your discharge book mm. the discharge book has really been up there when you are traveling you hold your discharge book so that when they ask what do you do for a living you just present your discharge book okay Over to you. okay yes. right me here beaucoup de difference um que je peux dire la 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 plus grand la plus grande différence je peux dire c'est dans le bien-être du genre de mer au Nigeria le bien-être du genre de mer n'est pas du tout respecté vous voyez les entreprises qui nous obligent euh, pour nous rendre à euh, au sur le navire à embarquer avec nos propres fonds nous sommes censés obtenir nos propres billets d'avion régler nos hôtels cela ne devrait pas être le cas Et vous voyez aussi euh, en ce qui concerne l'embauche d'emploi, euh, l'entretien d'embauche, l'entretien d'embauche. Partout dans le monde, ça se fait en ligne. Mais au Nigeria, on nous oblige de voyager des distances de Port-à-Côte à Lagos, par exemple, de Lagos à je ne sais pas où, juste pour le simple entretien d'embauche. Ce n'est pas bon pour le bien-être. Voyons aussi le cas des assurances. Là où je travaille, j'ai été obligé de signer mon assurance. Je ne pense pas que j'ai jamais vu euh, de tel fait au Nigeria. Je, moi, je n'ai jamais signé mon assurance quand je travaillais au Nigeria. Aussi bien que un autre, une autre différence, c'est les salaires. Si vous voyez maintenant la baisse du Naira par rapport au dollar, ce que nous gagnons au Nigeria, c'est minable. Ça ne nous permet pas de, de poursuivre les formations pour augmenter nos tickets, nos licences de travail. Et ça a été demandé si on pouvait, et si M. Jeremiah peut donner les exemples. Il a parlé de ce qu'on appelle OOW, Officer of the Watch, officier du cas. Il dit au Nigeria, l'officier du cas gagne moins que 2 millions de naira. Mais en Arabie Saoudite, là où se trouvent beaucoup d'entre eux, c'est quatre fois plus. Mais je dois préciser, c'est pas une seule histoire de l'argent, c'est pas le salaire seulement, c'est le manque de respect que nous subissons au Nigeria avec les gens qui travaillent dans les bureaux par rapport à comment nous sommes traités à l'étranger. L'argent n'est pas tout, mais quand les gens vous manquent de respect, ça, ça, ça compte pour beaucoup de choses. OK, Manuel, the main source of um, CFRS debate and outcry has been the quality and categorization of a certificate of competences that the COC issued by Nigeria especially. Could you run us 
through on what this is actually, also highlighting the issues of MOUs and all the bilateral trade agreements that are necessary for seafarers to work effectively. Monsieur Emmanuel, la qualité et la catégorisation du certificat de compétence délivré par le Nigeria a été l'une des principales sources de polémiques et de protestations des gens de mer. Pouvez-vous nous expliquer de quoi il s'agit réellement en parlant aussi des accords, de protocoles que le Nigeria a signé ou ne pas signé ou les contrats bilatéraux qu'on devrait signer qui n'ont pas été signés, s'il vous plaît? There are, there are a lot of limitations in the Nigeria license. And one of the limitations we have been talking about is the net coastal voyage limitation on the Nigeria license, which is stopping Nigerians from really exploring uh, 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 the career outside Nigeria. Because near coastal voyage is like cannot sail outside Nigeria. So that near coastal voyage, Nigeria does not issue unlimited license on management license. So that is one of the so that is class two and class one. That is class two, chief mates and uh, captain, then chief engineer, second engineer. So one of that's one of the limitations that have been putting Nigerian seafarers backward. We have been begging the government and telling them, please remove this limitation because it's preventing most Nigerians from like exploring this uh, profession outside Nigeria. Yeah. So and also the lack of MOUs with the uh, Nigerian COC. How many countries accept our license? Recently, Ghana signed the. If you go to Ghana, go to Egypt, go to South Africa, the license licenses are very strong because most countries in the world accept their license. But in Nigeria, you see, after in using interview for a job, you've been employed, you've been told your salary. That is the most annoying part. You've been told your salary. Okay, you send your certificates to the company, and they, okay. Send it to the marriage vessel flag is an Italian flag, for example. And yet you, you 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 reply that you can't get endorsements because your certificate cannot work on that flag. So it's it's very disheartening. So no, we no, have I, I would like to understand what you're saying exactly, sir. Um are you saying that Nigeria alone, you know, no other country but Nigeria issues the NCV, that's the near coastal voyage um, stuff. Je and veux mieux comprendre. Est-ce que vous dites que c'est le Nigeria seulement qui donne le um, la, la restriction sur les, les licences, c'est-à-dire côtier de proximité? Est-ce que c'est le Nigeria seulement ou bien les autres pays aussi donnent ça? Yeah, most countries... Most countries issues NCV for less than 500 gross tonnage. You sell mm -hmm. on less than 500 gross tonnage, they will give you NCV. But above 500 gross tonnage, they will give you unlimited. But recently, Ghana started this uh, issue also because uh, they will say because you did not sail from continent to continent, you have to sail from continent to continent before they will give you unlimited. Start giving Nigerians, Nigerians NCV. That's Ghana. To... Yes, Ghana. Ghana. So we start telling our members don't go to Ghana because why should I go and spend, for example, an OW to get an OW uh, an OW license in Ghana now? The minimum you should be holding is 15 million era. That's about ten thousand dollars. That is the minimum. So we are telling our members you cannot go to spend about 15 million era to get the limitation. Understand? You can't but OW in Ghana is unlimited. In the world now, it's only Nigeria that issues NCV, unlimited in OW license. OW license is unlimited everywhere. It is only when you get to class two and class one. So we are telling the government in Nigeria also, follow the standards, what is happening outside everywhere. OW does not have limitation. The only difference when you go to class is that those people with uh, HND, BSc get exemption for educational courses. Why the ones that have they have years of experience in the field as ratings that want to come for the course. They get both the educational and the professional uh, uh, courses. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. They don't get exemption. They do everything. So let them remove NC, uh, let them remove let them scrap this NCB from the OW license because it's not applicable anywhere anymore. Everywhere if you go to Egypt, go to Ghana, go to everywhere. OW is unlimited. 
it's only from class two and class one, uh, one that you have limitation. Let me let you from her before I ask. The real problem resides in the categorization near coastal voyage. Entendez pas la voyage côtier à proximité. C'est une catégorisation avec restriction que l'État du pavillon nigérien donne sur son certificat. Le Nigeria est le seul pays qui délivre encore des licences de voyage côtier à proximité et limitées pour l'officier du cas, qui est l'officier du cas et, et le, le, les, les gens scientifiques et les, gens, les ingénieurs nautiques. Globalement, la licence officier du cas, c'est ce qu'on vous donne et c'est tout. Il n'y a rien comme officier de cas limité, officier de cas à voyage côtier à proximité. C'est seulement le Nigeria. Cela nous empêche de faire la concurrence sur la scène internationale. Nous leur demander de retirer le certificat voyage côtier à proximité. Sachez qu'ils appliquent également ces restrictions sur les licences de gestion, c'est-à-dire les classes 2, les classes 1 pour les officiers, les capitaines, les ingénieurs en chef, les deuxièmes ingénieurs, etc. En plus, je, je vous l'avais déjà dit, le Nigeria n'a signé aucun protocole d'accord avec d'autres um, États pavillons. Le Ghana vient de signer plusieurs États, d um, états de protocole d'accord avec les autres, mais le Nigeria ne le fait pas. Il est aussi le fait que le Ghana a commencé maintenant par nous donner les restrictions sur les licences qui nous livrent, sauf, sur le, sauf pour l'officier euh, du cas. Mais sur les autres, le Ghana a commencé une politique de donner les restrictions. Donc, nous disons à nos euh, frères de ne plus aller au Ghana. Pour avoir un, 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 un diplôme au Ghana, il faut compter plus de 15 millions de naira, soit 10 000 dollars. À quoi ça sert de dépenser cela pour avoir la notation avec restriction à côté voyage et proximité. Ça ne sert à rien. Donc, le seul, la solution que nous demandons, c'est au Nigeria de lever la restriction là pour que nous puissions travailler et évoluer. Oh, Mr. Mano, you know, if I got what you're saying right, you're saying that IMO member states who are, who are members of the IMO just like Nigeria is a member, you know, when Nigerian seafarers go there, they are turned back because Nigeria does not have a direct MOU with that country. Si je vous comprends bien, les membres état de l'OMI, l'Organisation Maritime Internationale, dans le Nigeria, si nous allons là-bas, les Nigériens ne seront pas embauchés parce qu'il n'y a pas de protocole d'accord avec les pays là, tant quand bien même qu'ils ils sont des membres de l'OMI. Est-ce que c'est cela que vous me, me disiez? Uh, for your license to be accepted, you have to have a, a flag. Let me use UK flag, for example. Most all vessels have their flag. Nigerians, Nigerian vessels, they have their flag. UK versus out their flag. For example, for your certificates to be accepted on a UK flag, you have to have an MOU with the UK. Without an MOU, a membership in the IMO is not enough. Without an MOU with these countries, you can't. And this your... is the responsibility of the Maritime Administration. Yes, this is the responsibility of NIMASA in Nigeria. Okay. Okay. Because in Ghana, Ghana Maritime Authority, they've been the one signing the MOUs. Ghana has more than 30, uh, 30 MOUs with more than 30 countries. Like I said, last year, they signed MOU with the uh, UK. So anybody with Ghana license now can sail on the UK flag vessel. All so these years, they have MOU with Malta, they have MOU with Singapore and other countries. The last one was UK, and we were very happy because it was a development. And the, even Australia, they have MOU. So if you have a Ghana license, you can sail on Australian flag vessel. But in Nigeria, we call ourselves the giant of Africa. We have a lot of a big trade in uh, maritime. Most of these uh, container vessels come to Nigeria, but we don't have MOU with all these countries. We have to sign and uh, sign MOU so that they can be accepting our certificates. Pour que nos, nos licences, nos tickets soient acceptés, il faut absolument qu'il y ait un protocole d'accord signé avec le Nigeria et le pays là qui bat le pavillon de ce pays. Chaque pays a, est associé avec un pavillon qui, que le navire batte. Donc, 
la, être membre de l'OMI ne suffit pas. Il faut que le Nigeria signe le protocole d'accord. Le Ghana vient d'en signer plusieurs. Si moi, j'ai mon certificat, si mon pays n'a pas signé un accord, par exemple, avec les États-Unis ou euh, le, les Royaumes-Unis, je, je n'aurai pas le droit de travailler sur un avis battant le pavillon de, des Royaumes-Unis. Donc, c'est pour cela que nous demandons, demandons au Nigeria de bien vouloir signer le, les protocoles d'accord avec les pays et de retirer les restrictions sur nos diplômes. Um, Emmanuel, it's it's a beautiful work you're doing. Um, the good news is that you've um, told us about some success stories. While our time is up, we won't let you go without sharing some of the strategies you're using to circumvent, you know, the lack of MOUs and find your way on board vessels. And um, while you talk about what the, some of your success stories, I would like to ask it, what your primary demand would be from government as we speak. Emmanuel, merci. C'est une belle histoire que vous avez rencontrée. Je ne pourrais, pouvais pas vous laisser partir sans nous parler de votre, les succès que vous avez enregistrés et comment sont les stratégies que vous avez adoptées pour pouvoir contourner ces obstacles-là. Et si vous auriez l'occasion d'être face à face au gouvernement, quels sont les désirs, quelles sont les, les, les prières que vous allez leur demander pour changer les choses ici? I'll start with the, uh, our demand from government. Our demand from government is to invest in maritime education in Nigeria. Because uh, if you don't invest in people, then you, I don't see, you don't, you don't are not having a future. So you should invest in maritime education in Nigeria. You should also sign MOUs with countries so that uh, uh, we can, uh, Nigerian people, license holders can have more options of selling on different flags, remove the NCV tag from the licenses because it's taking us behind, it's taking Nigerians behind because uh, imagine Nigerians trying to get job on container vessels and they cannot because of that NCV tag. Mm -hmm. And also container vessels is a plus. Container vessels come to Nigeria a lot. We have a very big uh, 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 trade with what is it? PIL Max Line and the uh, uh, Costco Shipping Line and the uh, MSC. The government can sign agreement with them for them to take Nigerians on board, take cadets, train our cadets. But nothing is happening. You, uh, with PIL, we have a lot of we have a lot of Ghanaians on PIL, a lot of Ghanaians in Max Line, South Africans in Max Line. But you hardly see Nigerians on these container vessels. So we, we like to plead to the government to try and much as possible to talk, talk to all these companies. They are coming to Nigeria. They are bringing uh, 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 containers regularly to Nigeria. Let them take Nigerians on board their vessels. It's it's not a, it's not a big deal. It's not it's not something that is not possible. It's possible. Most countries have started it, did it and it's working. So we can also do it. The cadets are crying. There are no jobs. It's it's like it was. I, I don't expect all these container vessels to collect to take uh, officers that don't have experience on container vessels, but when they take cadets and they train the cadets and the cadets grow up to become captain and chief engineer one day. So we are begging them. If they need assistance, we can also assist them with companies and we can because some of us are working in all these companies. We can assist them and give them link on what to do. And our success stories uh because of this limitation in Nigeria licenses, we have been advising Nigerians to go outside Nigeria, get your license. Most people are presently going to Egypt, Poland, Ghana also. And even this, though there is a caveat with Ghana at the moment. And for now, we are telling them go before this uh, limitation started last year, after the MOU with uh, UK, that was when they brought the uh, uh, limitation for Nigerians. So, but before the, only Nigerians amongst all who go to their school. To be frank, I've not seen any Ghanaian having that limitation. I've wow. not seen any only Nigerian. A friend of mine sells on a Nigerian friend of mine sells on container vessels. For the past two months, he has applied for his eligibility in Canada. They, they are telling him they are on the meeting. Yeah, I was like, well, this is this is politics. Because you said we must sell on container vessels for you to get it's unlimited. Competition, actually. Uh, it's, uh, so it's trying to they are trying to limit us from 
because they have seen that we have started going outside. So that's a good license and beg Nigeria to remove the NCV. Those are our solid stories. Get a good license. Just go outside, get a good license. Struggle. It's not easy. Because, um, like how I said, many people in your group are <laughs> members of the um, work on board foreign liners like you do? Oh, I can't count now. <laughs> I can't count. Oh, we have wow. plenty. That's good. We have plenty. We have plenty. Yeah. Most of them are most of them are in the in in the US now we are more than 50. If wow, I can count. wow, wow. Well done. Yeah. That's yeah. all I can say at this point. Let me Saudi let Arabia, Saudi Arabia, I can't even count anymore. The last time I counted was, I can't wow. even remember. I can't well done. Your strategy it. seems to be working. We hope that government will come um, to your aid very soon. I'm sure yeah. with this kind of enlightenment, they would listen. I believe I believe. All right, if I'm over to you, Sura. Je commencerai par les demandes pour le gouvernement. Premier, je demanderai au gouvernement d'investir dans la formation maritime au Nigeria. Il faut investir dans les gens. Si vous n'avez pas fait cela, il n'y aura pas d'avenir pour le Nigeria. Deuxièmement, je, je demanderai au gouvernement de signer de protocole d'accord avec des pays qui battent les autres pavillons afin, de nous, afin que nous puissions travailler, de nous donner les tra les, le travail à l'extérieur. Troisièmement, de retirer le voyage côtier à proximité de nos eh, licences. Finalement, je dirais, il y a les, les navires qui, 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 de, de commerce qui viennent, qui, qui portent les conteneurs comme MESC, MSE, etc. Je demande au gouvernement nigérian de leur approcher, de prendre nos cadets de former nos cadets. Je ne demande pas de mettre les gens qui sont inexpéri inexpérimentés sur les, les navires, mais s'ils prennent les cadets afin de les former, ça va nous aider à avoir un cadre de, 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 de gens de, de main déjà formés. Finalement, pour les succès, le succès, c'est nous disons aux gens, obtenir un bon permis épargner de l'argent et équipez-vous afin de pouvoir travailler ailleurs. Nous sommes plus de 50 euh, euh, marins aux États-Unis. En Arabie Saoudite, je ne saurais même pas compter, nous sommes tellement nombreux. Donc, notre stratégie est de partir ailleurs parce qu'il y a une politique avec le Ghana. Ils, ils voient maintenant que nous allons à l'extérieur. Donc, ils essayent de limiter le nombre de licences qu'ils donnent. Donc, nous disons obtenir un bon permis, épargner votre argent, aller ailleurs pour améliorer votre avenir. Mr. Manuel, it's been a pleasure having you on today's show and thank you for finding time to share your experience and profess solutions, not just for Nigeria, but for African nations. We are glad for the work you're doing with the forum. Um, do well done and um, keep it going. We're sure that government would listen to you definitely. Uh, Monsieur Manuel, ce fut un plaisir de vous accueillir dans l'émission d'aujourd'hui. Vous faites un bon travail. Merci pour avoir trouvé le temps de partager votre expérience et de proposer les solutions, non seulement pour le Nigeria, mais pour l'Afrique aussi. Nous espérons que le gouvernement écoutera, entendra et il y aura un changement dans l'avenir. Surtout comme vous faites valoir ce que vous faites sur de telles plateformes, nous avons l'espoir qu'il y aura un changement très bientôt. Merci, M. Emmanuel. Uh, thank you, Madame Ezine, for having me here. I believe uh, the government will listen to us someday and remove the limitations from this license so that... Uh, I'm sure the government is ready to yes, listen. Yes, yes, that's our prayer. That's our prayer. Let please let them listen to us. Hopefully, they will discussion. listen to you. They will listen to you. Merci, Madame Ezine. J'espère que le gouvernement va nous écouter et ils vont gouvernement africain. Ils vont retirer le les restrictions sur nos diplômes. All right. Um, apologies, we shot uh, beyond our time, but what a show it's been. Thank you, all our viewers, for joining the special edition of live conversations where we talked about seafarers and their issues. Um, we really, truly appreciate TAC Marine Offshore for its uh, continuous support towards this program. Until next Monday, 
at 9 a.m. GMT plus one when live conversations comes your way again. It's bye from all of us at Maritime TV Africa. I am A's in there as an uh, Defumawa Bogo facilitated the French translation. Merci à vous tous, chers téléspectateurs, et nos excuses d'avoir euh, excédé le temps. Merci à Stack Marine Offshore pour le soutien habituel. Et à lundi prochain à GMT, 9h GMT, c'est GMT, c'est la même heure la semaine prochaine pour un nouvel épisode de Live Conversation. C'était l'équipe de Maritime TV Africa. Au revoir. Au revoir. Au revoir. Ha, ha, ha.